What's up, Calvin Gang? All right, so we got this physics problem here. So we got these two charges, and they're on this axis, and they're both having this velocity. And the first part of it is it wants us to find the magnitude of the magnetic field at the origin. So let's get started on that, right? So if we're finding it at the origin, uh, I'm going to make sure that it's the origin. I don't want to mess that up. Yeah, the magnitude of the magnetic field at the origin, right? So we have these two charges, right? Each of them are going to add some sort of magnetic field at the origin. So if we're looking for the magnetic field at the origin, we're going to have to add B1 is what we're going to label this guy. And then we're going to have to add B prime is what we're going to label this guy. Right? So let's go ahead and do this, right? So we need to find both of these. So let's start by finding B1. So B1, right? Well, what's the, what's the equation for the magnetic field due to a, a charge? Well, it's going to be U naught over 4 pi times QB, the vector, crossed with the unit vector for the radius times the radius squared. All right, so this is the equation we got. I'm going to get a chair for a second. I sit down. So, right, this stuff, this is all our constants on the outside here. Q is we, the charge of it. We know it's whatever, 8.5 times 10 to the negative 6. So then velocity, we're given velocity, and then the unit vector, we know R, right? So what's this unit vector, right? Well, this unit vector is the vector that's a unit length pointing towards where we're measuring at. So we're measuring at the origin, right? So our unit vector, R hat, or we can label this R hat 1, is going to be, right, 0, negative 1, 0, right? Because it's pointing downward, right? We're saying we're at this point, and we're pointing downward. So in that case, uh, let's take the cross product, right? So you can actually do this cross product, or you can do the right hand rule, which is what I'm going to do. So when you're doing the cross product, right, we're doing V cross with R. So you're going to put uh, one finger is the first one. Uh, so your pointer finger is the first part. So V is the first part. So we're going V. And then we're going to put R straight down, which is our middle finger. So this is, then our thumb is going to be the magnetic field, or whatever the, or not the magnetic field, but the cross product of this. So what you're going to end up getting is a negative. So what you're going to, that tells us this is going to be a negative one attached to this. If you do the cross product too, you'll get the same thing. You just have to make sure that V is positive. But this is basically going to become u naught over 4 pi qbr, or qv, right? And then this v just becomes the number v over r squared. And then this points in the negative k direction, like we just said, because the thumb points into the board. All right, so now we know these numbers, so let's go ahead and plug these numbers in, right? So v1 is equal to, so uh, did I write that down? This is a constant. I don't remember what the, the constant number is, but basically just look up u0. So then q is, I understand over here, 8.50 times 10 to the negative 6, right, because it's in micro. So we're going to have to multiply it by negative 6. The velocity, 9.4, or 9.50, right? Yep. 9.50 times 10 to the 4th. And then don't forget this negative. I'm just going to bring the negative up front from the k. R squared is, um, what's the distance, right? 0 0.3 is the origin. 0 0.300 squared. Cool. And uh, if you plug this in, you're going to get that. B1 is equal to, uh, why is it K? Okay, that's right, yeah. So if you plug this in, you're going to get B1 is equal to negative 8.97 times 10 to the negative 7 Tesla K. Cool. Okay, so we got that. So let's do it again for the next part. So we can get rid of this and go ahead and do the next part. So we're doing B prime now, so B prime is the same equation here. So let's do the same equation. So now our distance is four and our velocity is up. So let's do the right hand rule again, right? Let's see which direction is B cross R is gonna go. So R is pointing this way, B is pointing this way. So if you go, V is a pointer finger, crossed with R is the, the position vector from here to here. So then your thumb now points outward, which means you're gonna be positive K. So again, you could do the normal cross product the normal way, but this is just kind of like a quicker way to do the math. So unit over 4 pi, qv, the unit vector just becomes 1, which is, you know, and then it's going to be positive k, and then over r squared. So let's plug all our numbers in for this one. You get b prime is equal to u naught over 4 pi, q 
cubed, five, negative five though, don't forget the negative five. And then you have to multiply by 10 to negative six, of course. Uh, the velocity is seven times 10. And over r squared, which is 0 0.4, right? That's distance to the origin. Square it, okay. Then if you do the math on this, you'll get the prime is equal to uh, negative 2.19 times 10 to the negative seven Teslas in the k direction. So what is this minus, right? Both of our both of our magnetic fields due to these charges are pointing inward. Uh, this one points inward because we have a negative charge, but it's going outward. So it's kind of make sure you just keep track of your negative signs on this. So then if we're finding magnitude, of course, all we have to do is uh, add them together like we said up here. So if you add B1 plus B2, you're gonna get that B is equal to uh, negative 1.12 times 10 to the negative six Tesla, okay. And if you're finding the magnitude of B, of course, due to the absolute value, and it's just gonna become the positive version of this. Negative six Tesla. There's your answer. Cool. So we did part A, let's see about part B. That part A took a while, so hopefully part B isn't too long. What is the direction of the magnetic field produced at the origin, right? Okay, so, um, it's a negative number, right? We just said that B points in the negative uh, Z direction, right? Negative K. So that means it's gonna point into the board, right? Negative points into the board. So, uh, I guess we could write this somewhere. Into the board. Or into the paper, or whatever you have it say. Into the page. Okay, so part C, what is part C asking, right? What is the magnitude of the magnet magnetic force that Q prime exerts on Q, okay. So this time we have to draw a triangle between these two. All right, so if you do Pythagoras theorem here, you're gonna find 0 0.3 squared plus 0 0.4 squared, take the square root of that, 0 0.5 squared per meters, All right? Cool, so this time we're gonna use a different equation. So this equation is the equation we use between two points. Right, instead of, uh, or instead of, if there's a charge at a point, and we're finding the magnetic field on that point due to another charge, we're gonna use this equation. So in this case, <clears throat> B is equal to U naught over four pi. It'll be Q V sine theta, or rho or whatever, over R squared. All right, so a little different than the other one, but this one, we're pretty much just using uh, an angle instead. So what are we finding, right? We're finding at this charge, right? We're finding magnitude that Q prime exerts on Q. So we want this charge on this charge, so what we're gonna look for is this angle. So this is our theta, and if you find this theta using tangent, so of course tangent of theta is equal to 0 0.4 over 0 0.3, and you're gonna find that theta is equal to 53.1 degrees. Nice. And then we're looking at this equation, right? We're finding the magnetic field at Q, right? From Q prime. Yeah, so we're finding Q on Q prime. So instead of, what you're gonna use is you're gonna use the distance between them. This is the theta, the theta from here to there. And we're gonna do it from Q prime and the velocity of that prime, right? Because we're taking it from this Q prime. So we have to put in the prime for these two. So we know these numbers, so we can just calculate this now. So we can say, Uh, so this is going to give us a magnitude. And the reason we're finding magnetic field is because we're going to use that later to find force. So it'll be u naught over 4 pi, q naught uh, negative 5 times 10 to the negative 6. V is uh, the velocity, 7 times 10 to the 4th, sine of 53.1 degrees over R squared, 0 0.5. You're gonna get the B between, or B at one, or whatever is what you can call it, I guess. Is equal to 1.12. Negative seven to 
this one. Cool, then what are we gonna do about this? Okay, so in this case, I'm just taking the absolute value because that's all we care about right now. So then we're gonna plug it into this equation. QB cross with B. Now what direction is this point, right? It points in the K direction. Yeah, so because Q and B are gonna be orthogonal because B is gonna point inward and B is gonna point this way, they're gonna be equal to the same thing as if you just multiply them by each other. So then if we plug these numbers, we're going to get force is equal to all right, the charge of the, uh, the point we're looking at. So this time it's going to be 8.5 times the velocity of that point, which is 9.50. And then cross with our multiplied by b, which we just found there, 1.12 times 10 to the negative 7. get that force is equal to 9.04 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons. Negative. So this is a positive number, so it's going to point to positive y. And why is that? Well, so if we do the right hand rule again, right, b points in, b points in the page, velocity points this way, force is going to be upward, positive y. So there you go. So that's how you solve this problem. Uh, a couple steps you gotta do, but ultimately, uh, it's a pretty good question. So, if you need any more help with uh, Physics 2 or any other topic, feel free to ask me in the comments and check out my other videos. So yeah, see you next, guys. See you in the next one, guys. Peace.